Okay. Hope you hope you all can see my screen. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, look into this. Okay, so uh, here is what we are going to do today. Uh, let's uh, do a quick recap of all the admin uh, tasks. So uh, here is the list. So first we've seen, okay, what are the process? We have O2C and P2P, then nothing but order to cash and procure to pay. Uh, where are all these on the transactions? We have purchases and payables, which is the procure to pay, uh, P2P. Uh, under this, you have all these forms and they're all connected. Uh, and even how are they connected? When you go to customize form, you can see uh, the connection. Uh, for example, um, if you see sales and customers over here, you have all this uh, order to cash, O2C process. Uh, and you have all your uh, sales order invoices mm, okay how are they connected you can even see this okay let's do create invoice let's go to customize customize form Okay, looks like it's very slow today. Okay, we need to customize form. If you can see, uh, uh, where is it? Uh, is it on the quick view? No, custom code roles. Uh, no. Oh yeah, linked forms. If you see a link forms over here, you can see the link. Uh, uh, you can select link forms. Uh, you can see the link over here, or else uh, it's automatic. It's uh, on the form itself, uh, or else it takes default. Uh, default uh, of forms. You, you have it by standard. Next to method, we can see uh, the option. For example, if you go to sales, uh, let's look at any sales order which is not yet invoiced. So on that, you, you will see the option to invoice the sales order. And that's how from one form, uh, the transaction moves further. Okay, let's see pending fulfillment, pending fulfillment, pending fulfillment. Okay, let's see how, how can it be fulfilled. Uh, just open any pending fulfillment sales order. So from sales order, it goes to pending fulfillment. Uh, and from actually from sales order, it even goes to invoice, that is in getting the payment part from customer. Uh, and also from sales order, it goes to fulfillment, where we send the uh, items to the customer. So, okay, okay we, now we are on sales order. So from here, how is it fulfilled? Look at here, we have a fulfill button. So it's like this, either you have a button to go further, or else under this tab, uh, you'll see the options. Okay, so that's how uh, the process go uh, go further so we have two processes in purchase and payables which is a p2p procure to pay and o2c order to cash in sales and customers and those are the two processes and we've seen a ui walkthrough uh, uh, let's see each one this all recent records that we've seen and then we have add to shortcuts okay i, I don't think it's available let's click on this yeah it's not available for us and then uh, dashboards uh, this is this is your home button so whenever you open uh, this is where uh, next week uh, shows you uh, it, it brings you here and under this you also have set preferences these are personal preferences you can put your personal uh, settings over here show internal ID. this is what i told you it's very important and then appearances you can uh, distinguish between your uh, sandbox and production accounts by uh, providing different uh, color themes for each and rest all I don't think you need to uh, worry about but just uh, do some research and feel free to know more about it and then we have activities uh, this nobody uses no client uses it's all similar to your outlook or your email uh, settings email management so that's all not required uh, because every client uses an external application like Microsoft Outlook or the Office 365 or something and then we have payments okay this uh, the apar teams take care of this uh, it revolves around uh, send, uh, paying uh, the vendors or getting payment from the customers it's all under this uh, they do the check processing the payment processing all that uh, nothing uh, is concerned to us so uh, 
but still if you want to look what all forms are in here what all what all happening inside here just do some research you'll get to know and then this is the main uh, business uh, area transactions where all your to both the processes are present over here uh, along with these two processes don't forget we also have journal entries which is under financial make journal entries it is the uh, taking money from one account and putting in different account it's like balancing your books the general gl means general ledger so it's called gl accounts general ledger accounts so just to balance or if there is a wrong transaction and some money is taken out from a uh, account again that money should be put back to that account so that's where a general entry is created saying okay money uh, it's like debit and credit so it all it should always match so remember the criteria whenever a journal entry is created the credit and debit both both must match so that's all under transactions and then on the lists okay these are all standard lists uh, accounting we have all the gl accounts the currencies exchange rates all items so these are all uh, some other uh, uh, accounting lists which uh, business users which uh, we are not concerned with and then under this okay we have employee list under this under relationship we have customer vendor uh, and mm, yeah just customer and vendor are the important ones and if required prospects which i don't think this is all required uh, only very few uh, least clients they use all this but mostly it's customers and pro and vendors that we are concerned with on the relationship and rest all uh, i don't think we are all that much required okay mass update is required but we'll see that in uh, uh, while we do development part and reports under this only two things one is new save search uh, which we create and uh, reports which business creates and then under customization this is where developer uh, mainly works on uh, over here he creates custom lists custom records and all custom fields custom columns under forms he has all the entry forms uh, transaction forms and over here we look at uh, transaction form pdf layouts even that's important and even sub tabs don't forget the sub tabs at the top and then scripting this is completely related to developers and then we have suite bundler which i uh, told you you can uh, what all uh, customizations you do you can just uh, create a bundle uh, and add the, all those customizations to that bundle like for example you create a uh, custom list custom record custom form or custom script anything uh, what all you're creating in sandbox you can add all that to a bundle and push it to production and the bundle will be installed in production so all your form scripts that are present in sandbox they will be uh, created as is in production using this bundle and as i told you most most of the clients they don't use suite bundle they just uh, manually create everything in production uh, then documents so this is like our uh, storage system like uh, you store all everything all you have file cabinets uh, file cabinet you store everything inside this uh, you have suite script all your scripts attachments that uh, we receive that we send from this netsuite account uh, you can even images uh, that's where we, we store all the images concerned with the client and then we have templates only email templates are what most of the clients use and then mail merge don't worry about it but still if you want to know what is mail merge just uh, search for it in help you get to know and then under setup this when a, when a client takes netsuite subscription this is the first thing they do they come under setup they do all the setup company information and all the features they want to use and see all the uh, renaming transaction records uh, states countries that's uh, that where the client is doing business in even countries list the general preference settings uh, printing and fax settings over here so and these are important ones the classification sub service departments these two are most important every client uh, deals with this uh, like sub service is nothing but all the locations that the business is done and departments like there are very different departments like it department their hr department finance department sales department marketing department they like there'll be multiple departments in each and every company and all those are uh, managed under these departments and then we have accounting setup or even this is done when subscription is taken uh, it's important thing in accounting list you have standard list over here uh, all you can see all standard list in this accounting lists and then uh, these are all other uh, accounting preferences even here accounting preferences you have uh, just look into this accounting preferences uh, let's see what is there yeah just some settings as i told you if you don't understand anything just 
uh, click on the label and you'll get to know some information about it in the field help so and also there are sales this is concerned with sales department this is for marketing department this for support don't worry as i told you we're not going to use support from here support is used only uh, in production using this tab over here the next tab so and then all site builder this for e-commerce if at all you are uh, damn and damn lucky or damn unlucky i can't put it uh, but uh, according to me it's unlucky if you uh, get into an e-commerce project uh, being a fresher in its field it will be uh, too hard too difficult uh, if you're working on e-commerce platform e-commerce is nothing but uh, where a company has a website and that website is hosted by netsuite and uh, from them from netsuite we uh, maintain the Netsuite, uh, the website create create the website capture the information from the website and uh, like for example you have a company uh, any company like uh, for example you take jc penny okay uh, you have jc penny website your customer creates uh, customer create uh, creates a order online okay uh, i'm I have, I, okay i work in jc penny company we created a website using netsuite and you are a customer uh, you go to jcpenny.com and you buy something do some shopping buy some clothes for you and that information again we capture it back into netsuite that someone has made this order and within netsuite okay we have all the details of the order we create the sales order we do invoicing and we send the invoice to you the customer hey this is your invoice for the order you made and then we'll get the payment from you from your bank account which uh, you provided the details you provided on the order and so that's e-commerce that's where e-commerce is and uh, most of the developer part within e-commerce it's it uses advanced java but for our ERP, regular ERP, it's just basic JavaScript, uh, and on top of it, it's uh, NetSuite APIs. Yeah, but e-commerce, it's advanced Java. Uh, so yeah, that would be an issue if you guys get onto a e-commerce platform or e-commerce uh, project. And that's uh, from here. Site builder, you can see all those e-commerce related uh, things, tasks. Okay, then you have import export. Uh, we went, we also looked into this. Uh, what do we do? You know, it's just for importing, uh, importing. Yeah, it's just importing, uh, see, uh, importing data into NetSuite using CSV files, and we've seen it's. Uh, you have add option, you have update option too, and it's just field mapping from the CSV file to the record fields, and then you have users and roles uh, where you provide permissions to uh, an user. Like give access or remove access add add a role or remove a role maintain the user data it's all under manage users and then you have manage roles uh, where you add and remove permissions to a role so all those who have a particular xyz role if that role has permissions only to few transactions only those transactions these people can access it's like that and even within the permission you have create view edit and full permission so only if you have full permission you can do everything with that record uh, so that's users and roles and then uh, customization uh, this is uh, Serigo. Serigo is a third party tool uh, which sends data from NetSuite to, to, uh, NetSuite to other uh, third party applications so don't worry about that uh, let's cover that in the integration topic so customize this part and even integration uh, even over here you have Serigo integrator so Serigo, about Serigo we will cover uh, after, uh, after completing our developer part uh, we'll have a session uh, where we'll look into integration part. I guess there's only one integration within NetSuite that is Celigo, and all our integrations would be custom integrations which we'll build using uh, scripting. So that's all under setup, and then you have support. Uh, in production, you go to support, and over here you can contact NetSuite support for all your uh, queries and issues and bugs. And here you also have suite answers as i told you it's it, it has everything that help has like all the help documentation plus few uh, extra top of things like uh, training videos or uh, questions and answers uh, from users to uh, users and answers provided by netsuite so it's like uh, uh, those are nothing but when you contact user oh sorry not user group when you contact NetSuite support center, sometimes if at all it's an important, it's like a relevant question. It's like, oh, this makes sense. Uh, and the answer should be known to each and every client. That's when they uh, add that question and answer to the suit answer section. And then I told you, you we have NetSuite user group, uh, which is external. You need to have a uh, 
uh, account and that account only if you have a client uh, email address that's what i've seen but i don't know if you guys tried creating an account in a user group uh, using your gmail id if at all just let me know if using gmail id we can we can even enter a chat on the group meeting and uh, inform to every one of us that you have successfully enrolled into this user group using your gmail id i'll look at it at the end of the class so that i'll get to know if it's still the client email address or our personal email addresses that we can use to create a user group account so this is a ui walkthrough that we just went through and don't worry after support all these implementation these are all like added bundles just implementation there is it's it's an added bundle so suit social is added bundle fix assets these are all added bundles and you are not creating all these bundles as i told you we have suit bundler right over here so every company has some bundles installed let's see what are the search and install the next let's see list so honeycomb what do they have Yeah, see there are a lot of bundles and few of them this all should also be here and whenever some of the, uh, there's an issue in either of these uh, we just update the bundle or contact uh, whoever has created the bundle or whoever has made the bundle available to us most of the times it it is netsuite that uh, provides us these free bundles so uh, we even contact netsuite support for issues with these bundles it's not it's it's a functionality with like this implementation is functionality. Switch switch is a functionality. So bundle implementation is just a, it's a bundle name, okay? But it has components uh, which uh, provide a functionality, unique unique functionalities. So that's about uh, uh, UI walkthrough. And let's see what are custom forms, customization forms. You have custom forms over here. Entry forms and transaction. Entry forms has customer, vendor, and employee. Transaction or has all of our uh, transaction forms that fall under uh, order to cash and procure to pay categories. So I guess you, you all might have seen this. You know all this. So when next week, uh, when next subscription is taken by any client, uh, they have all the standard forms, but nobody uses standard forms. Certainly, uh, it doesn't make sense to use standard form. So every company they create their own custom forms using the standard forms and they use the custom forms. Only few you can see uh, there's a contact form this is preferred or even this is custom. Okay, competitor uh, that's a standard. See only few competitor I don't know even we are using it or not. So case see it's a CRM. Okay, case we are not. I don't think we are using case. These all fall under these activities. So what all fall under ent uh, ERP? You can see entity, customer. This customer is a preferred. See, this is a custom form. It's a mostly custom form. Each and every entity and uh, transaction forms, we create our own custom forms, and that's what uh, every client or company uses. So these two things, uh, entry forms and transaction forms, that's where you uh, find all your custom forms. And then you have custom fields. So we've seen we have different types of custom fields. Everything's here. Uh, entity field, uh, the field that we create on employee, uh, customer, and vendor. Item fields, the fields we create on item records. Where the item records? It's here. List, accounting, items. These are item record or master master item. Uh, you can call it master data. That's what uh, that's a term used in most of the clients. Where is our master data? Master data on items. Item master data. That's what they call it. Item master data. That's all here. Lists, accounting, and items. So all the fields created on item record are uh, called item fields. Okay, there uh, and then there are CRM fields. CRM fields. Uh, it's all created on for all these activities and all that. And then we have transaction body fields. That's created on all our transactions, like uh, sales order, invoice, uh, purchase order, and all that. And then we have column fields. All those columns, uh, columns are available only on your transactions, right? Sales order invoice. You have all the line levels, item level, and even on general you have the all line level. Those are columns. So uh, you can add columns. You can or you can uh, move the columns or rename the columns. It's all can be done here in, under transaction column fields. And then transaction item options. What are these? These are something new. I guess we look into it. 
Yeah, something new. So, so within item, within the item record, I guess it's actually second one. I forgot what it is. Where is this? Applies to purchase same web store. Okay. Oh, looks like these are all uh, for the e-commerce side item options. So don't worry, you won't be creating any of this. Transaction item options. Okay. Then we have item number fields. Even this one too. Even this is uh, something new. And there's nothing. Okay, let's see what is this one. Oh, we are creating for specific items. So yeah, we will look into this item number field. So for specific items, we can create a field only for a particular item. So that is called item number fields. And then we have other custom fields. Uh, where do we have this other custom fields? Yeah, like bin. We've seen the bin record. And yeah, on subsidy, on department, on account. Yeah, this this things this standard uh, classification records they're called subsidiary department and account. Yeah, if you want to create fields on that, then they all fall under other categories. Other category, okay. Then okay, these are all the fields we have. Then we looked into okay, fields and columns we looked. Okay, what are custom lists? As you know, there are standard lists and standard lists you can find here accounting, accounting lists, but all our custom lists are created here. It's nothing but a group of values so like you have account type what are different kinds of account type ordinary and check this is for some this is coming from some bundle so don't worry about this if you look at any uh, cities i guess this is created by some one of our guys yeah it's just a custom list with a group of values C ca sfo oh sfo is not a city oh yeah sfo is city sorry ca is not a city the state okay ma is also a state <laughs> new york okay you can say it but Claim yeah. you better change this name to cities and states <laughs> the CA and MA are not cities. Okay. So all our lists are here custom lists and that can be found under customization lists, record fields and lists. And what are what are these lists? Where do we use them? On a form, on a trans on any record, we create a field. And within the field, we have different data types like checkbox or date or uh, or just free from text or list by record. So that's where list by record. That's where uh, we have all these lists. And if you select any, it's a drop down. It's just drop down values on a field. So if you want to create a field with some drop down values, those drop down values should be in a list. And that is this. That should, that list should be in under these custom lists. Okay. And then. And then we'll see custom sub tabs. So these are tabs on the top, and sub tabs are on your transaction. For example, let's put any transaction. See, we have sales order. So okay, these are all sub tabs. We want to add a new sub tab, like some, like we someone someone of us added RBK tests. So how do you sub? How do you add a sub tab? Uh, you go to forms and sub tabs, and for the appropriate category like transaction or entity or item or CRM. Wherever you want, you create. See over here, Zahir fields, RBK fields, Texaras, NT fields. So you create a tab, and uh, it gets added to all transaction forms. But even you need to go to the form, customize the form, and select that tab in the under the tabs. Uh, first uh, under the tabs uh, column, the tabs category. And then only if you have a field in that, you can you'll be able to see it, or else you won't be able to see it. Like for example, uh, let's go back to this sales order. We have this RBK test. There should be something in it. Okay, this guy has added. A, he attached a uh, custom record to this. That's why uh, we can see this. If there's nothing in a tab, it won't be available. At least you should put a field in that. Move a field from anywhere to the tab. Only then the tab will be available. Don't forget that. You might uh, get worried. Like you created a tab and the tab is not visible. You even you might say I went to custom form. I even select and um, enable the tab, but still I can't see my tab. It's because there's nothing in the tab. You need to add a field or add a sub uh, add a uh, custom record to that tab. Only then the tab will be visible on the form. So those are about custom tabs, and then custom records. Yeah, so what are custom records? It's just a table. It's a matrix. Uh, you can just store data. What any data you can store. And it can be on itself, like it's not connected to anything, or else you can connect it. How do you connect it? Like, if you're connecting to, okay, wow, a bus just took there are no fields. Okay, 
like I guess we created one right uh, let me see we created one called testing hmm. you might kind of see okay yeah we created test natural train that's what we created so how is it connected like it should have a record in it yeah we have employee record over here so it's connected to employee record what we do we go into that field uh, because that should be the parent you can you select this record is parent as soon as you select this you will get a field over here parent subtab so on employee record uh, this custom record you are setting it onto a tab which tab select it rating so on employee record on the under rating tab this custom record is set there and there are two ways on that employee record you will have option of create new uh, custom record or, or else you can come back to this uh, custom record and you can always create here from here like you can go more view records you can do from here so it's either ways you can create from here or even from the record so this is custom record where you store all your data any data and then we have pdf layouts this uh, we couldn't um, create them here but i showed you guys how to create how to find first of all if the print button is not there's some issue with the print button the layout they want to change something most of the times you'll get the uh, requirement such as okay change this uh, the build to box ship to box i want the size lesser i want more size so oh, if you go to okay let's not go to sales or that is can we do that customize form is it available or is it locked yeah if this print button is uh, we need to make some changes on the print button First, we need to know okay, what is the layout connected to this form. And then you will customize form, and then you'll see uh, the template, the PDF, the print template. Okay, this is advanced. It should be basic. Okay, PDF layout. Advanced. When you click advanced, what are all this? These are created by HTML or created from scripts. But most of the time, uh, clients they use basic. So on the basic PDF layout, that's our uh, this PDF layouts. Okay. So you look into this, okay, which layout is that? You just go to that layout and customize that layout. And also print, printing fields. See, uh, the fields selected here, they go onto that layout. Like company logo will be available on the lay layout. Uh, all the fields that are available here, footer fields like total, discount, all those body fields, like the, all the header fields, on all the fields on the transaction and the column fields. So. This all will be added to the layout. Add. Additionally, even you can go to the layout and you can add more fields over there. How to do that? I guess might have forgotten. You need to go to customization, forms, advanced, oh sorry, transaction form, PDF layouts. You get into this and you find your layout. You click on customize and okay, this is directly created from that form customization form. Uh, under printing fields, all those are selected. So what all should be available here in these columns, body fields, bill to, ship to, logo. But additionally, you can create new fields, new information. You can add it over here. Like just create add element. You select any field, and you also have an option here. Wrap the text. Make sure you always wrap text so that uh, all the information will be available, or else it will be cut off. Uh, then show label if you want, or else you. It's up to you. You can show the label, or it's just the value on it. Click OK, you got this. So move anywhere you want. Any anything you can move. Click on columns. If you want to move columns, you can mention okay, it's 7.5 width, let's put 9. Then changes, there will be changes. See, there will be change here. So it's you can make all the changes over here. And if you want to make any field, okay, we have account field over here. If you want to make the value to be italic, just click on this italic over here and it gets italic. It's a change into italic. Prem, is that you? Can you please mute your audio? Okay, thanks. So this is where you uh, do all your layout uh, changes. So you can add from here or else only only those fields that are available in uh, body fields and columns on the customized form you can add select those. But if you want, you don't want any field under body fields. You can you want it separate somewhere else. Then, then you create uh, add custom element and select that field and place it wherever you want. So this is about your PDF layouts. 
then next save such as remember you will be creating a lot of save such as you may be admin or developer you will get requirement to create a save search or you may just ask hey give me some data you you yourself will be creating a save search or from from within the script you will even create save such as from script or create save search itself and call it from the script access it from the script so most of the times you'll be doing uh, this you'll be accessing this save such as so we have save such as here all save such as let you can see one save such as uh, one save search i see all these standard save such as and then, okay and how is the save search done when you click on new search uh, and you select okay on what do you want to search on which account you want to search on account record okay and don't uh, if you if you have it's a minor uh, requirement then you can just uh, if you want all account num numbers uh, the all accounts that uh, where the number of the account is not empty then you can just simply do here and click submit but if you have a lot of criteria then it's better you always to create save search and here see it's already the number is not empty so under criteria all your filters all your conditions you create you put them under criteria and what all results you want you select them under results and what order like even sorting option is available and then what are required audience to whom you want this uh, census to be seen even roles and email only if you want CSS to be executed automatically and results to be sent to somebody else. So only then, if you want to schedule a save search, that's where, uh, and then you come to here, email and yeah, send emails according to schedule. So you provide a schedule, okay, this save search to be triggered every day at 2 a.m. and the results should be sent to someone, who a specific recipients, go and add here. And all these recipients, they should be in um, this next week. So it's basically employees to yourself, your team, your, your business user, your finance user. So someone says, hey, I want to report every day at this time and this is my criteria. Do you create a search and on that email option, you do, okay, schedule, okay, what time he wants and okay, give his email ID over here. That's it. So that's save such as, and then we have reports, right? After save such yeah, reports. Reports are mostly created by business. The only thing they'll ask us to do is if they can't find a field or they want us to add a field. Okay, uh, so where are saved reports? Okay, you go to saved reports. All saved reports. Yeah, see, none of them are created by our uh, any of us. See, oh, Prem, great, you created one. You must have just copied from this. Let's see what you do. Okay, yeah, you must have, looks like you copied. So, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> what all requirements do you get? Uh, just add a column. I mean, add a field. So you come here, you search for the field, and you add it to the results. And filters, don't worry, they will add the filters themselves because they are the ones creating the reports. And uh, one more thing, I told you, uh, if at all they find uh, a field, uh, if you're if they're searching for a field and they see two fields with the same name, uh, if they are sensible enough, they can hover on this field. And at the bottom on the help, they'll get to know okay where is this field coming from. If they are, you can call them dumb. If they're dumb, they'll ask us, hey, I can see, I see two two fields with same name. Let me know which field is for which. Then you come, you look at that, you put your cursor on it, and you'll see okay this is coming from okay this account is coming from uh, web sales orders. It's coming from sales order, and this one you know this is sales order, but you see it's a gross amount, it's a net amount, so it's different. Uh, it's that's the difference. So see, it is committed. This is coming from sales order. So it doesn't make sense. See, it's they both are coming from sales order. So it means someone has just created it, uh, just created a duplicate field. In that case, we need to remove the duplicate. We'll have we need to have the uh, the main field and then should be selected here. If you remove, the, if you uh, delete the duplicate field and uh, from this list here, the duplicate uh, label will go away. So those kind of uh, tasks you'll be getting on reports. And then after reports, we have CSV imports. So you've seen what are CSV imports. You are given a pile of customers and said, okay, add these customers to that suite. Or you're given a CSV file with customers and some data and you'll be, you'll be told, okay, update this uh, customer information in that Or even sales order or employees or any. Add or update, that's the only two options you'll be given. And how do you do? 
set up import export import csv records and then you select where you want this import to be done uh, if for example it's uh, customers then do we have customers here now do we have relationship here yes on relationship you should be seeing select relationship and the next record type uh, say customer only it's like that okay if you are if you're importing sales order do you have sales order no do you have transaction yes click on transaction and then under record type you should see sales order here yeah it's like that and then you select any file and then you proceed to next now it won't let us proceed because we don't have a file so the next option and on the next page you do you select your option add or update which one does even add an update so what that option does is if the uh, record is found it updates if record is not found it adds so that's the second page where you select add or update and then there's a queue thing too if you have multiple queues you can change the queue in the advanced setting on the second page when you click next and on the third page you have all the field mappings on the left side you have all your you'll have your csv file fields on the right side okay which record see we here we selected sales order so all the sales order fields will be on the right side so then uh, you need to map in between and don't forget there should be uh, you should either have internal id or the external id when you are i mean when you are uh, updating there should be internal id or external id always uh, to recognize that record that's a key field so internal id and external id are two key, key fields so all the time when you're doing an import uh, you should uh, have either of those fields in the mapping most of the times it's internal internal id that you use and after you do mapping the next page is uh, save and run so you go ahead and name and just run the report run the csv import and once you run the csv import at the top over here you'll see in little uh, uh, in small size you'll see uh, view uh, import job or import uh, job status you click on that you'll see all the csv imports that we've done actually you can see from here view csv import status see this is where you can see see there are four csv imports done so you know when you click on that link uh, view view job status it will bring you here and you can see okay when you just created a CS, uh, CS import you'll see that at the top or you do refresh and you find it on top and you'll see the percentage uh, if it's completed it's, it will show you okay 100 percent complete and it will even give the message like if you have it has 100 records it says 100 of 100 records imported successfully if in case it doesn't uh, import all it will show you okay 90 after out of 100 records imported successfully then you click on it you click on the CSV response you will get to, get to know why those 10 records didn't get uh, imported and then again you can work on it and again do the import for those 10 records so this is about our csv import functionality that much small doubt yeah uh, but suppose if some company is using uh, other erp system uh, like oracle or something like that okay if they are migrating to uh, if they are uh, they want to use NetSuite now, they are migrating to NetSuite. Yes. Uh, how they will uh, import their data to NetSuite using the CSV yes. import only or is there any another process for this? Within NetSuite, uh, the standard process for over NetSuite, it's this, just this one, CSV import. And you can okay. see it's a field mapping, okay, if it's uh, like 10, 15 fields or 20, 30 fields, okay, fine, if it's straightforward, uh, value set it bring the value from that field in that system and uh, putting that value in this field on our next weight if it's simple such way then this is the only option but if there's if a record has like 100 or 200 rows or columns and we need to do validations in between that like okay you get a value from there and you need to convert the value for example if the value is uh, decimal value okay you should not set the decimal value you remove the decimal you can you need a uh, you do rounding of that value and then the, that value should be set so these are validations this, this that is called validation so those if you have such validations to be done for that external data then you can't use the csv import then what do you use uh, you should have any uh, integration tool like uh, boomi uh, it's an integration tool so such like that we need some integration tool and most of the clients they do have integration tools so it's only when uh, the data is uh, not co complex, very simple data, very straightforward data. Only then we use CSV import, okay? And rest, rest of the ex uh, scenarios, I, as I told you, uh, it's a customer data, okay? A simple customer update or simple sales order update. 
that's when uh, you use the CSV import option. Understood? Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Thanks. No problem. So after CSV import, what do we have else? Uh, we have managing users. Uh, I'll show you guys uh, setup, user roles, manage users. So when you get into a project, if you want to see, okay, who all are present in this company, who all are working on in this company, uh, you can come to users. But if you don't find users, okay, first you need to compare, okay, uh, manage users, okay, we have 56 users over here, but go to lists, go to employees, employees, you get to know, okay, what are how many employees are present in Honeycomb? You can see here 98 employees are present in Honeycomb. And here you have uh, each employee uh, information. Okay. And most of it, even this, it's available even on the user record too. Let's see Nasim already. Uh, we just opened his. Okay. Let's open this. Okay. You see most of the data would be same. The phone numbers. See, it's all same. Employee, employee. So, what, what, uh, what are the tasks that we get? Uh, you can just look at uh, in employee information. There wouldn't be any confidential like how much is his salary. All that wouldn't be here. That would be maintained in a different application. So you'll have basic information that everybody can know. And then under access, this is where uh, we provide him with suite access. We give him access. Uh, when you give him first time, you need to provide a password and give the password to the person and ask him to change. There's also a checkbox to change, uh, which requests the user to change password after logging. And here are the, uh, the roles. You can provide roles. You can add and remove the roles. And this is what, this would be the only thing uh, they would ask you to do on user records: adding roles, removing roles, giving, providing access, removing access. And when someone says, "Okay, reset my access, reset my password," okay, then remove the access first, and then provide the access. But if you're removing the access, make a note of all the roles they have, because once you remove the access, they all will be gone. So you should make a note of it and then give back access back, provide a new password and add those roles and give the password information to him saying, hey, this is your password. Don't forget to reset it, uh, I mean, change it back uh, once you log in. So that would be your uh, requirement on user records. And then you're providing roles to each and every user. So what are they in the roles? That's our next topic. That's our uh, roles. So we have roles record. Each role has a record. And within that record, what are there? Uh, we have permissions. So people who have this role, they can, like for example, there's a check. They can edit a check because there's an edit permission. They can edit a check. Credit memo, even that they can edit a credit memo. So it's like edit does uh, create, uh, if you have edit access, edit permission, which means you can even create it, okay? So let's uh, put in an order. The first basic permission is view, which means you can just view it. You can't do anything, okay? Next, you have create which means you can view and you can create that's it and then you have edit which means you can view you can create you can even edit okay then you have full which means you can view you can create you can edit you can even delete it so that's the order so whenever there's a full uh, level permission that's where you can do anything on that record see you have full over here so find transaction so you can do full uh, inverse approval you can see here full so on inverse approval, you can view inverse approval, you can create it, you can edit it, you can even delete it. So that's how permissions are. And here you have transaction permissions for each role, report permissions, list permissions, setup permissions, even custom records that we create, even those permissions you can add here. And the forms, okay, this particular role can access only these forms, which are enabled here. If some form is disabled, it's like if you uncheck this, and that particular uh, form will not be available for this uh, for the user who is logged into account and role. Okay. And then there's such as these all are irrelevant. You not okay. Under users, you can get to know okay who all are having this. See, lucky guys, only these two have this account and role. The dashboard history. Normal history, you'll get to know who created this role and. Who all updated? Get to know all that. So that's about roles. It's basically adding and removing permissions. If someone says, "Hey, I see an error which says you don't have enough permissions," then you'd ask him, "Hey, okay, what are you trying to do?" He'll say, "Okay, I'm trying to create a new one." It says, "I don't have permission." Then, okay, you need to ask him which role he's in. That you uh, first you'll check his user record. If, if there's only one role, then it's obvious he's in that role. 
there's multiple roles you need to ask him hey from which role you are you are not able to access uh, you're getting this error or you're not able to view a invoice then he then get to know the role from which he is getting the error then come to that role record over here okay role record he says he's in this accountant role and he's trying to uh, view a invoice he's getting another so in that role make sure invoice permission is there he's trying to view so view permission should certainly be there if not then we'll reply back to him hey your role doesn't have this permission and blindly don't give permission you need to have approvals for each and everything you first need to ask him hey do you have approvals uh, or else you ask your manager hey uh, this guy uh, his role needs permission to access uh, invoices should i give him or uh, do we need any approval from anyone else so yeah you need to get to know the first all those uh, criteria how the process uh, processes work within an organization and if it's coming through a ticket like for example there are tickets uh, it's not like he'll send an email saying hey provide me this permission it's not like that okay most of the clients 99.9% .9 of clients then say uh, application where they log in tickets users they log in ticket okay i want this requirement hey this is not working and that tickets are assigned to us by our team lead or our project manager or someone and we work on those tickets so it's like that so this person is asking you via email you'll say hey your role doesn't have this invoice permission you know some permission uh, create a ticket so most of the time when a ticket is created either on the ticket or uh, when we are uh, implementing it there will be there will be somewhere there is uh, approval uh, level somewhere there should be approvals so maybe it's uh, most of the time it's on the ticket itself when it's creating a ticket first uh, it should be approved or else when you if your uh, manager is uh, giving you the ticket that means he has looked into it and okay it's fine to go ahead and implement that whatever is asked in the ticket just like that and then so we're done with users and roles and then we we've seen file cabinet okay what are in file cabinet and email templates it's under documents files file cabinet this way we have everything you can shoot script see there's also a separate way you can get into file cabinet click on shoot script or you can directly go to files and switch it and these are all of our scripts that our developers create or bundles create or are provided by in its beta standard and then we have attachments that these are received attachments from customer or vendor and then we have attachments sent yeah just one okay and then we have images too yeah you can just store all the images all the client related don't go and uh, store all your personal pictures over here and then you have templates okay email templates you look at email templates kindly see they are okay, they are using one email template so as i told you again i'm telling you again what is email template for example item fulfillment or okay, invoice okay an invoice is created you are sending your invoice to your customer okay or vendor either so when you're sending uh, most of the time the data would be same except for those main uh, customer name amount or items the rest all the data would be same so that's why we create a template another template where the data is changing we select the field so data we'll have the data the field you're selecting so for each and every customer it will be different the data is same but the field which we select setting on this template will be keep on changing right if the field is customer name so for each customer the name will be changing amount will be changing it's like that currently we uh, honeycomb doesn't use any uh, any template that's why we can't see let's see what rbk template has oh it's it has nothing please find all the details enclosed in this email okay that's good so it will like this and then you'll have order number okay text editor field type okay you want the order number transaction and then under here you will get order number field is it order number or just number yeah there's no order number so it should be just number this even the number is not available so there's just name or something okay whatever it is whatever field you should find here 
these are all the transition fields so the input total let me take here is your uh, inverse total and then you put this uh, you selected this field so whenever this is sent uh, it's sent on a customer record right or on a sales order on a sales order uh, you have this communication tab let's show you that from where do you send it uh, sales mostly let's show you fulfillment fulfill orders leave so where are uh, users sending this uh, using these templates and sending in emails to customers or vendors oh no this one we shouldn't see this one okay this is not this page don't worry uh, we won't use this page uh, this is used by users uh, they come to this page they they see all the pending uh, sales orders that to be fulfilled and they select whichever ones they want and then they submit okay and we have nothing to do with this page so fulfill orders list okay i can go here so you click you open any fulfillment okay it says to shipped once it's shipped you need to send an email to the customer saying hey we've shipped your order so where is that done order shipping workflow custom well i don't see the tab there will be a tab called conversion okay conversation or communication you will have a tab called communication under that if you click on that oh you have contact here okay activities messages files and yeah under messages okay now no one names it a history <laughs> it's not history <laughs> so you'll have these messages over here you click on email okay when you click on email uh, it uses template so that is a template which uh, you can see here message or messages there's a template rbk template see you click, click on rbk template and you will get this and if the field is present over here okay let's let's see created from field is here uh, let's go to the template again and uh, put create from documents email templates okay no six formats should be enough okay over here let's create it from let's do create it from transaction created from good we have it so and then you save it okay oh the problem is okay the field should be there let's see if it's there item fulfillment okay good that's created from available here so when you click on email uh, leave okay and then you go to message you create you click this rbk template and then oh, see it's not working and normally uh, this value should be there sales order value should be coming here so currently it's not showing us it should be showing us this value okay it should not show this there's some issue like maybe the template is not created properly so that's how it works when the template is created you click you select a field and what are the field and that uh, if, you, if the template you're using from a fulfillment that field should be present on fulfillment okay if it's not present on fulfillment make sure your field is available on fulfillment if it's on sales order go to the field make it available on even fulfillment and if you don't want anyone to see it you can hide it somewhere under custom tab and then select that on the template then you'll get the that field value on that email message so those are templates that uh, we use that in email sending emails to customers or vendors so <coughs> Yeah, that's all about file cabinet and email templates. Then we have suit bundler. What is suit bundler? You implement any requirement, you create all your custom objects like fields or records or script or workflow. So all that uh, either you manually create in production or else you can NetSuite provides a standard option uh, saying you can bundle them all and that bundle you can install it in production but as i said no one uses it most of them doesn't use it and where is that customization suite bundler create bundle you create the bundle go to production and in production you go here search and install bundle and search it by the name mostly do advanced uh, enter the bundle name as you create it and then search it in all this for so you'll find it either at the place make sure it is made public and uh, either of this is selected on the in sandbox when you create the bundle 
and once you find the bundle just click on it and there will be install option install button here click on install and all those components components in the sense all your fields or whatever you added to the bundle those will be installed in production as it is okay uh, that's about bundles suit bundling and then dashboard kpis as i told you uh, it's on dashboard oh, what is uh, how do you get some data over here simple you have criteria based upon the criteria you want results to be shown here so you create a save search for the criteria and you select the save search when you do personalize add this and you do setup and you select okay this is just a kpi scorecard so it's not available so normally you select the save search and all its results show up here and also there are portlets and portlet will look into it when we do the developers part portlet is nothing but uh, you provide a form a small minor form like this and when the uh, user enters the value and clicks the button the portlet script calls a suited script and that end captures all the data that user entered and based upon that data we do some we perform the script performs some logic some business logic that the user wants so this is where you do all your kpis and dashboards as i told you oh, kpis this someone if someone wants to look at this data it's analytics right so you always have analytic uh, applications available so most of them most of the clients they don't use these dashboards but anyways you should know how, where you can see all those dashboards and then finally it's up to the support from where can we get help as i told go to help you have all the documentation here any new topic that i haven't taught or that you come across any to work on it just come to help and uh, just do some research on it as i told inventory management is a separate module uh, which very few clients use you come across your project a new project that your client uses it just come to help uh, spend a couple of hours you'll get to know how it's used in netsuite and customization on any module is same it's everything same the only thing is with experience you will work on each and every module like inventory management that's a module that's a module too order to cash is a module copy to pay is a module so this way you can get help from the help option here and then all everything else on the support contact me to support from here in production okay if you're not given access the, you have a reason if you need to contact me to support you need to contact through production that's why you can request for net production access you can even say okay give me just read only access so that you won't mess around in production and this netsuite user group is external group not controlled by netsuite anybody can uh, post a question and anybody can provide as many answer as many answers as they want <coughs> check it if you can uh, get create an account register using your gmail or else once you're on a project you can just uh, use your uh, official email id and uh, Rest an account with user group, and you also have suite answers. It's nothing but uh, every help. Uh, it includes everything that's there in help, and also on top of it, you have some additional training videos or any useful uh, interaction between any client and uh, NetSuite support uh, will also be added there if uh, they feel it should be uh, known to each and every client. Those all things will be added on suite answers. So this winds up our uh, admin part of training. <coughs> so I would <coughs> suggest you all to log into your NetSuite account and do pra keep practicing, <coughs> keep creating fields and all this. And yeah, as I promised, uh, sorry I couldn't send you out the assignment, but the thing is I need to know the names to send out assignment. I can't say create a field test field to each and every one. Everybody cannot create the same field with same name, so I need to know the names. Let's see, okay, Kirti, Nagendra, Fani, RBK. Wow, I don't know what is RBK. <laughs> okay, Satish, Sudhir, Zahir. Yeah, and this caller three. I don't know what is the name of caller three. Maybe I look into your uh, email IDs and figure out uh, your name, and based upon your name, I can provide you an assignment. So your assignment will be like this. Uh, if you get assignment file, it's not only your assignment. Everybody's assignment will be in that. So first point, okay, create a field. Okay, create a transaction body field under which I'll give, I'll provide each and every name. Okay, Narsima, you create this field with this ID. 
this data type okay and nagendra create this field with this data type so it will be a good practice and don't worry you practice your assignment and also you can you get a chance to practice other assignment like for example see uh, nagendra and funny okay nagendra will create his field and then funny will create his field but nagendra can also create funny's field using a different name okay if i ask funny to create a name okay, a field called uh, uh, company and then nagendra can also create a field called company space 1 or company 2 or company uh, space nagendra it's like that you can uh, even practice other assignments too so yeah for that i need your names and then i can uh, enter sit down spend couple of hours and create assignments so mostly uh, <coughs> by tomorrow i'll be sending out the document uh, i just need to spend some time and create that assignment for you guys so i'll be creating like couple of assignments all, all on admin tasks so at least i'll do from my side to make sure you guys are practicing or else we can we can monitor you guys and see whether you are practicing or not see it's only uh, useful to you it's, if you practice and if you get into a project uh, you can at least uh, work you can manage at client location if you don't practice and you get on to a client location if they ask you to uh, create something very simple like do a csv import or add a field to a column or add a field simple things if you don't practice there you might get nervous and you don't know how to create it and that's why you get caught and you'll be sent back home so if you practice these things i am saying don't practice a developer task even developer training which i'll start from tomorrow it's not that important because developer things you can't learn without having a live environment okay only when you get onto a project you get a developer task create a script uh, you'll have a support or any you take help from someone they create the script you look at it they will teach you only then you can learn okay how to do scripting but admin part it's not like that <clears throat> admin part nobody needs to teach you you just need to practice I mean, uh, if i if i give an assignment okay you, in the assignment you have something okay uh, create a save search using this criteria you create the save search using that criteria then you get an okay this is how you create save searches you go to project they'll say hey, i want a report you know how to create a save search create it using their uh, uh, criteria and provide them the report so it's it's useful to you guys if you practice it's easier for you to manage those 8 hours on at client side or else it will be hard for you so do you remember that point and once i uh, give out the assignment just practice it and if you if you have any questions in the assignment if you are unable to do anything just contact your friends take help from each other or else you can even direct uh, uh, shoot me an email and i i'll help you out in personal okay so yeah just keep practicing i'll send out the assignment and from tomorrow let's start the developer part uh, we'll have we should wind up that in at least 5 6 classes at max so as i said we are not going to uh, go through each and every detail of developer training because if that's the case it will take weeks and months uh, to go through each and every aspect of developer training as i told however how hard you practice developer stuff it's irrelevant once you go to project you get a requirement to do some scripting You get it done by someone and learn no get to know how it is done only then you can learn developer part so what i'll teach you is what all are present in developer uh, tasks okay what all are present like what are different kinds of script okay even within script what are the different kinds of functions like different when and which scenarios do we use this script which scenarios do we use that script so those basic things i'll uh, teach you guys i'll let you know okay i'll impart all that i know Uh, basically i'm a developer so i'll uh, also not only that uh, some few things okay even within scripting there are some few two three things which uh, i want you guys to know so even that i'll cover so we let's show you guys what we have in develop uh, in developer part you go to scripting scripts okay uh, what all scriptings what all scripts you have you click on the type okay these are all the script types we have suite let rest let user event scheduled client route let so we have like five to six classes to cover all these kinds of scripts and also look at workflows what are workflows over here so if you don't want to script you can use workflow but workflows have lot of limitations that's why you can do scripting scripting doesn't have limitations i mean it has but that's uh, very far down the road so most of the requirements that you get you can easily do it uh, via scripting so that's it guys for today uh, 
that's uh, Ma'am, Sam, uh, yeah yes kitty one quick question can you please send me the uh, recorded sessions i yeah actually yes I... sorry i was about to talk about talk regarding that so the thing is uh, there are there are some constraints uh, i am talking with uh, texara and we need to edit we need to edit lot of things before providing uh, the recordings to you guys actually what i was told is i need to record just for our uh, use not to provide to you guys but the thing is uh, this i don't feel there is uh, there would be any confidential thing uh, to hide from you guys so certainly i would i will be uh, providing all the recordings that i have done but the thing is i need to edit few of those like uh, some things which uh, shouldn't be there uh, so i will be editing those and yeah then process and there are huge files right so first we need to edit them and we need to upload them onto a google drive and then we'll, i'll share the link with all of you guys so don't worry i'll be doing that uh, this week itself you'll be getting all this uh, sessions okay. for sure okay okay good. okay guys uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we want we need the trust from you guys. See, I I have the trust from you guys that you are not going to upload on YouTube. <laughs> that would be a disaster. <laughs> that would be disaster if you go and upload on YouTube. And also make sure you, if you are not only you, Kirti, like any one of you guys, if you are sharing this recordings to either of your roommates or your cousins or relatives or your best friends, make sure you trust them that they won't upload this on YouTube or. Uh, Pass it on to a couple of like uh, it goes on full circle and lot of people get into this. So it's like that. If and let me tell you frankly, if someone goes through all these recordings, they don't need a training. <laughs> At least for admin part, they don't need training. They can just go through all these recordings and they can start practicing and working on it. So that's why even that's a reason why uh, any consultancy would be hesitating to provide. So that's why I'm saying upon my trust, I, I'll give you all these recording sessions, but only after editing them. Okay. Okay, guys. Uh, see you guys tomorrow. Let's start all the. Uh, let's start this uh, developer part from tomorrow. See you all. Uh, keep practicing. Good night. Yeah. Bye. Bye.